Hello, and welcome to the Springfield Green County Library's virtual brown bag travelogue. My name is Chrissy Siner, and I will be presenting today on Galveston Then and Now. Won't you join me on a trip with my small family group as we travel around Galveston Island and Bolivar Peninsula? Galveston is a barrier island located approximately 50 miles southeast of Houston, Texas. It's accessible from the mainland via causeway, and it's also connected to Bolivar Peninsula by ferry boat. Galveston's location near the mainland and its deep water channel have always made it very attractive to explorers, privateers, and yes, pirates. In November of 1528, Spanish conquistador Cabeza de Vaca became one of the first Europeans to discover this area when he and fellow crew members were shipwrecked on or near Galveston Island. In the early 1800s, a Frenchman named Louis Michel Henri was appointed the resident commissioner of Galveston Island by the fledgling Republic of Mexico, which had declared Galveston Island a port of the Republic. Commissioner Ari was very quick to set up his own privateering operation to take advantage of the increased shipping traffic in the Gulf of Mexico. Indeed, the pirate Jean Lafitte set up his own colony that he called Campeche in 1817 in order to take advantage of the smuggling opportunities in and around Galveston Island. There are several attractions in Galveston that will take you back to the island's shipping and smuggling days. One of those is the Texas Seaport Museum, which includes the tall ship Alyssa, a fully restored, fully masted tall ship built in 1877. Another place you might enjoy visiting is the Pirates Legends of the Gulf Coast Museum. This is especially good for families. They show a short video and there are a lot of different artifacts and storytellers and yes, they do have pirates in residence. Although Juneteenth is now a national holiday, it actually originated on Galveston Island on June 19, 1865. On January 1, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all slaves in the Confederate States. Unfortunately, news traveled very slowly back then, and the information was not received by the authorities in Texas until 1865. At that time, on June 19th, General Order No. 3 was read publicly that freed all the slaves. Juneteenth is their celebration to commemorate their independence. Next year, in time for the 2022 Juneteenth celebration, Galveston hopes to have their Juneteenth Museum open in the old Customs House. The hurricane of 1900 caused widespread destruction on Galveston Island, destroyed thousands of homes, and was responsible for the deaths of between 8,000 and 12,000 people. The after effects of the storm rewrote Galveston's history and its future. Much of Galveston's shipping traffic moved to Port Houston while Galveston worked to rebuild and to try to protect the island from future storms. Those protections included adding as much as 10 feet of elevation to many areas of the island and constructing a 10-mile-long seawall to protect against future storms. By the end of World War I, Galveston was working hard to reestablish itself as a resort city. When Prohibition began in the 1920s, organized crime came to Galveston in the form of the Macheo brothers. Sam and Rose Macheo were responsible for building the Hollywood Dinner Club and also later on the Balinese Room that actually extended out on a dock into the Gulf of Mexico. These establishments were two of the many businesses that sprung up and flourished from the late 20s to the late 40s, mostly due to lax law enforcement. 
During this time, the island was referred to as the Free State of Galveston because the law did not seem to apply to those business owners. The Hollywood Dinner Club is long gone, and unfortunately, the Balinese Room, which had survived up until 2008, was destroyed in Hurricane Ike. Fortunately, there are still quite a few historic sites to see, including the Bishop's Palace and the Moody Mansion. You can easily tour Galveston using your own vehicle, or you can take advantage of Galveston's historic trolley system. This is a really economical way to see the sites without spending a lot of money. In 2008, Hurricane Ike devastated Galveston Island. The salt water brought in by the hurricane storm surge soaked in and killed most of Galveston's live oak trees. While the residents grieved the loss of these trees, local artisans worked to find the beauty in the devastation. Many of these pieces can be seen from the local trolley tours. You can also acquire a map of all the sculptures locations at the local tourist center or online. Of course, the reason for coming to Galveston Island was to be near the beach and in the water. There are a lot of interesting sights to see from the beach. You can see a lot of pelicans, lots and lots of seagulls, and even some barges and shrimp trawlers coming in and out of the port. Galveston Island and Bolivar Peninsula are two of the very few places where you can actually drive your vehicle onto the beach. This is a very nice option for families who plan to stay there the entire day, although it can make it a little crowded, especially on weekends. My family chose to stay at Crystal Beach on Bolivar Peninsula. Fortunately, we were able to stay rather close to the beach, which gave us some stunning views. I am always interested in seeing and photographing any wildlife and especially flowers and plants that I see on my travels. Here is a view from our rental and also a small sampling of our beach finds. This was the perfect getaway for our family as we celebrated my mother's 80th birthday. No one wanted to leave at the end of our stay. I think Galveston Island has something for everyone. There's wonderful shopping on the Strand. You could visit Moody Gardens for a fun-filled day. I mean, just relax on the beach. Take a walk at sunrise or sunset. Have a little fun in the water. Just anything you want to do. It's a nice place to go to relax and to get away, unplug, and unwind. Thank you for joining me today. See you at the beach.